Give Energy have unveiled their new 13.6 kilowatt hour second generation all-in-one battery system and it's very impressive to say the least. I was lucky enough to have the director of product development at Give Energy talk me through the new all-in-one with particular emphasis on its revolutionary new hybrid inverter that is even better than the one in the Powerwall 3. In this video, I'm going to take a detailed look at the specs of the new battery system and the innovations that Carl and his team have come up with. Now, we also have another video coming out soon, comparing it directly to the Tesla Powerwall 3. So stay tuned for that. Now, I do need to specify that the product is not released yet and Give Energy have said that they may tweak a few things in the design between now and the launch date. And it will look a bit different than the one that was on the wall at Solar and Storage Live. But the headline specs will most likely stay the same. So let's get into it. I want to start by talking about the brand new hybrid inverter that has been developed for the second generation of Give Energy All-in-One. First and foremost, this inverter has a whopping six MPPTs. Now this is amazing. And you remember that the North American version of the Powerwall 3 does also have six MPPTs. However, for the UK model, Tesla limited it to three MPPTs. Now, one big advantage of having six is that it goes a long way to eliminating the need for microinverters. When you have that many strings to play with, you can do a lot of shade mitigation with just the string inverter. And you can also handle some pretty complex panel layouts. Six MPPTs will be a bit overkill for most people. However, let's say that you have a standard solar array with a chimney in the middle that will cause a bit of shading for a few panels a bit like my client Sam had in the case study that we filmed. With six MPPTs, you'd be able to put two or three panels on their own string and very cost-effectively mitigate the shading issues from the chimney without needing to put any panel level electronics on your roof. Another use case would be if you have a complicated roof with lots of different dormers and gable ends, much like the one on screen now. Usually, you'd have to pay a premium for a microinverter system like Enphase or an optimized system like SolarEdge. However, with the six MPPTs in the Give Energy All-in-One, you'll not have to do this anymore, which is great. Of course, it's not gonna be quite as good as a microinverter, and you can't have one panel on a Give Energy All-in-One MPPT, but it will be a lot more cost-effective. The better that these string inverters get, the less financial sense that panel level electronics make. If you're being pushed a system with microinverters or power optimizers, it's worth looking at this new Give Energy battery or the Tesla Powerwall 3 as a cheaper alternative that will do a lot of the shade mitigation for you if your design is a bit clever with the stringing. Like the Powerwall 3, the minimum input voltage for the MPPTs on the all-in-one is 60 volts. This means that for lower voltage panels like the ICO Neo Star 2 or the newer model Neo Star 3, you'll ideally have a minimum of three panels on one MPPT. Alternatively, you could use a higher voltage panel like the new Rec Alpha RX series. You'll only need two of these to hit the minimum input voltage of 60 volts. Watch our YouTube video on the new Neo Star 3 panels that should be coming out early 2025 to learn more about those. The six MPPTs are also great for future expansion. If you have a roof space which you don't want to put panels on yet, but might consider looking at in the future, then the excess MPPTs will allow you to just install the additional panels and run the cables back to the all-in-one and connect them up. It makes adding more panels in the future very cost-effective. Currently, with a lot of battery systems, if you add more panels on in the future, then you have to add another inverter on at the same time. But because you've got all these spare strings, you don't have to do that. So what about AC output? Well, the new Give Energy All-in-One is capable of 12 kilowatts of continuous AC output to the house, which is around one kilowatt more than that of the Tesla Powerwall 3. You'll be able to put up to 20 kilowatts of DC input into the hybrid inverter, which allows you to massively oversize the solar system and make the most of your available roof space. Now, if you do decide to oversize the solar system that much, then there will probably be a bit of clipping on the sunny days when the panels are actually operating nearer to their kilowatt peak. However, by oversizing it this much, you will get more generation in the early mornings and the late evenings, and you'll also get a lot more generation throughout the winter months. So what if the DNO say 
No, you can't have the full 12 kilowatts, which is becoming more and more common these days. Well, like with the Powerwall 3, the Give Energy hybrid inverter can be throttled down if you get restricted by the DNO. The Powerwall 3 can be limited to 3.68 kilowatts, then 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10 kilowatts, or installed at the full WAC 11.04. However, with the Give Energy all in one, I think it's going to be a lot more granular than this and you should be able to limit it to whatever the DNO say. So if you get a DNO offer for say 9.83 kilowatts, then your installer can go to Give Energy and tell them to restrict it to 9.83. Now, this probably won't impact most clients. However, for those that do get a really detailed DNO restriction, it will allow them to take advantage of the full DNO offer instead of having to round down to the nearest kilowatt. In terms of the actual battery charge, it should be able to charge up at six kilowatts, like with the first generation all-in-one. Another key point is that this hybrid inverter is optional. If you don't want to have the hybrid solar inverter functionality, then you don't have to. The battery unit actually comes separately without the hybrid inverter installed. If you do decide to get it, then it just sits on top of the main battery unit and can be removed and replaced with a watertight plate to cover up the exposed electrical connections if you don't want it. The key benefit here is that for those that aren't getting solar PV, you don't have to pay for a redundant hybrid inverter. So you're not wasting any money on unused technology. Another exciting development that will be released alongside the new all-in-one is the new Give Gateway 2. And this is very special for a few reasons. Now, the Give Gateway 2 has a 100 amp main incomer and will be able to handle a full single phase supply. It's also capable of whole house backup. The backup change over time for the all-in-one is a maximum of 20 milliseconds. The first big development is the ability to separate standard backup loads and critical loads in the wiring of the Give Gateway 2. So let's say there's a power cut and your battery is charged up to 100%. It'll then power whatever loads you have wired on the backup side as standard. However, when the charge of the battery gets down to say 20% or whatever you've set it to in the app, then the gateway will stop powering all the backup loads and switch over to only power the critical loads. So you could separate your standard backup loads that are more nice to have and your critical loads like your lights, Wi-Fi, and your fridge. And then in an extended power outage, the system will keep the critical loads running for as long as possible without wasting electricity on the non-essentials. Another thing that Give Energy have implemented with their Gateway 2 is something called Smart Loads. With Smart Loads, you can set certain appliances to only run at certain times. Let's say you have an electrical appliance that you only want to power off peak. And I know a few people that do this with heat pumps, for example. Well, you could ask your installer to wire that into the smart load switch gear in the gateway and then pair it up with your smart tariff so that the load is only powered at a certain time. This could also become useful if you have a dumb EV charger, basically a charger that can't integrate with smart tariffs by itself. Smart loads should allow you to use the dumb charger that isn't able to integrate with tariffs to take advantage of cheaper off-peak rates. Finally, there's also a generator input so that the setup can be used off-grid. The Give Gateway 2 can trigger a diesel generator to start up if the battery drops below a certain percentage. I'm not 100% sure whether that diesel generator can be used to charge the battery as well, or whether it can only power the backup loads but I assume that it can also charge the battery. A key point here is that all this switch gear is optional. The Give Gateway 2 doesn't come populated with any of the fancy switch gear. Your installer will be able to buy the relevant switches from the distributors. So if you don't want the smart loads or you don't want the critical loads, then you don't have to pay for any tech that you're not using. Again, this is all consistent with one of Give Energy's key design points for the new all-in-one, which is all about making sure that the consumer is not paying for any technology that they're not going to use. Give Energy has added a screen to the front of the new all-in-one. Carl did a great job of explaining this to me, and the key benefit is that it can be commissioned locally without any internet connection, as well as on a smartphone via Bluetooth. When you fire the system up for the first time, the screen will come online saying, welcome to Give Energy. And the installer will then be able to run through the checks on screen to set up the system. And then finally, it'll let you connect to Wi-Fi or LAN at the end if that's available. The all-in-one can connect to Wi-Fi, LAN, 4G, GPS, and BLE. 
which means Bluetooth low energy. Now we didn't discuss this, so I don't 100% know that the screen has this functionality built into it, but I assume that you should be able to monitor the system from the screen as well. I'd be very surprised if it's not able to do that. This screen is a nice addition. Solar inverters do have screens built in for controlling the system and monitoring the generation. But for some reason, that's not really caught on for battery storage. It looks like Givenergy are now pushing in that direction. And I look forward to the days where you can play Pac-Man on your home battery system. So let's talk about some of the other technical specs on the new all-in-one. Much like the original first gen unit, which was designed to allow Give Energy to come after Tesla Powerwall 2's market share, the new one has been designed to one-up the current kingpin of the battery market, the Tesla Powerwall 3. And the new all-in-one has a 13.6 kilowatt hour storage capacity, which is 0.1 kilowatt hours more than the capacity of the Powerwall 3. I don't have the exact dimensions of the new all-in-one, but it did appear to be a bit more compact than the first generation. It's IP65 rated, which means complete protection against dust and low pressure water jets. Heavy rain should be absolutely fine as it is designed to go outside. However, it's not quite as protected as the Powerwall 3, which is IP67 and flood resistant up to two feet. In terms of the design, the DC solar strings can be installed rear entry or side entry. Otherwise, it's the same installation setup as the first generation Give Energy All-in-One. With regards to the warranty, the second gen All-in-One is going to retain the 12 year warranty that Give Energy has implemented for other batteries. Currently, to qualify for the 12 year warranty, you have to subscribe to get the battery health checked on years five, eight, and 10. Give Energy did hint that this health check plan may be relaxed a bit, as long as you choose an experienced certified installer. But I don't have any further information on that for now. With regards to the launch date, I think we're looking at late Q1 2025, maybe a bit later or a bit earlier. I don't have any information with regards to the pricing either. Tesla managed to keep the price of Powerwall 3 very fair compared to that of the Powerwall 2. We were very impressed at how well priced Powerwall 3 is, and I hope that Give Energy can make this new solution as competitive as Tesla's. So when might you want to consider this battery system? Well, Really, it's aimed at Powerwall 3 customers, and it'll be interesting to see how the Powerwall 3 market will be affected by this new product. As mentioned, there will be a video comparing this to the Powerwall 3 coming out soon. Ultimately, they're both very similar products. If you have a complex roof that requires more than three MPBTs, then it's worth looking at this new all-in-one. Similarly, if you like the idea of critical load backup and being able to take advantage of the smart load switch gear, then you should get a quote for one of these. Although the more complex the design, the higher the price will be. In conclusion, this is a brilliant battery system, which on paper looks like it's a properly serious competitor to be the new king of the battery storage market, especially with those six MPPTs. It'll be interesting to see if Give Energy change any of the specs between now and the launch next year. If you'd like to request a quote for when it is released, please see a link on the screen now to put your name down, and we'll give you a call when it comes out.